Energy is an enabler. Without it, life becomes a lot more difficult. Now, this was really brought home to me back in 2007 when we had the storm that washed the Pasha Bolka ashore. My suburb at the time, Islington, was without power for nearly a week. Now that's no lights, no fridges, no mobile phones, and no internet. I got the briefest of glimpses of what life would be like for the 1.3 billion people who don't have access to electricity. And it showed me just how fragile our electricity supplies are. Small scale renewables give us the power to improve the reliability of our electricity supply while also allowing more people to share in its benefits. But that doesn't mean that all the problems have been solved. Solar panels only work when the sun is shining, small wind turbines are noisy and inefficient, and batteries aren't yet economically viable. At Diffuse Energy, we've been working hard to overcome these problems by developing a small wind turbine that is twice as powerful as our competitors, while also being quieter and safer. It complements the power output of solar panels very well, and it actually improves the economics of batteries. Ultimately, we want to help everyone to achieve energy independence, but we are establishing a, a beachhead in the yachting market. Now, I know what you're thinking, why yachts? But it makes sense for a number of reasons. So yacht owners are acutely aware of their energy problems, which our technology can greatly relieve. They are well funded and they're willing to pay a premium for a high quality product that meets their needs. And yacht owners love, love to talk about their yachts, allowing us to establish strong word of mouth and brand recognition. And they also buy more than $50 million worth of wind turbines every year. Another initial market that we've identified is in remote telecommunications. Now the towers that provide these vital services currently use solar panels with diesel generator backup to provide the energy because they don't have access to a reliable power grid. Our technology in conjunction with the solar panels can remove the need for the diesel generators, uh, allowing to uh, greatly minimising their operational and maintenance costs. Once we've started gaining traction in these two markets, we will take our learnings and develop a larger turbine for other uses, such as for remote communities and for developing countries. Now these markets represent revenue of over $3 billion per year. We have trial customers lined up for both of our initial, initial markets, and we're currently looking for suppliers and manufacturers to blow the socks off our early adopters in these markets. And we're also looking to talk to battery and solar distributors and advisors to help us on our commercialization process. So if you'd like to climb on board this very exciting project, please come and see me after the presentation. So that was my three minute pitch. It's what we've been working on the past six months. It obviously changes a bit depending on who we're talking to, whether it's venture capitalists or investors or angel investors. Um, and it's something that, you know, you ne you've never completely finished your, your pitch. It's, it's a constantly evolving process. Um, so what I wanted to do was just give you a bit of a timeline, a bit of a background of, of what we've been doing um, with Diffuse. So the technology has basically evolved from my PhD research. Uh, my background is actually in, in civil engineering, but I got sick of building coal infrastructure and convinced my supervisor that I needed to do a PhD in mechanical engineering because I wanted to get into renewable energy and wind energy in particular because it's a good fit for my, um, my background. And the, so we've developed a, a, a more efficient turbine and I've used uh, the uni's resources to, to provide, um, to develop a simulation method that I've then validated in our wind tunnels by developing a, a prototype for testing. So that has basically culminated. Um, I've, I've finished my thesis and I submitted it at about the end of last month, about this time last month, which is a bit of a, a good, big load off and a tick in the box. Um, and I thought, you know, that's, um, that's going to be, you know, a, a load off my shoulders. And, but what's happened is that the business has sort of, I thought I'd have a few more free weekends now that I've finished my thesis, but uh, no, I've been working every weekend since, usually both days, unfortunately. So sorry to my wife. 
And but so towards the end of um, last year, I was working out what I was going to be doing after my PhD because I, I re recognise that there is actually some value in what, I, what I've done. There's a, there's a real potential to, um, to make an impact on the world. And I was wondering, looking around, how do I go about actually commercialising my research? I had no idea where to start. Uh, and I stumbled upon a flyer for a startup story. So I was here about, um, so August last year, so about this time last year, um, I watched a presentation and then I was talking to Siobhan and Mickey after and they said, talking about what I've been doing, they said, oh, you need to come along to uh, this, this introduction um, day that we're having uh, for On Prime. And what it involves is, so it's, it's basically a, a CSIRO funded program to help researchers commercialise their research. And I thought, well, you know, that fits me perfectly, fits me to a T. So I went along and had a look um, to the, at the introduction day and then I managed to drag a couple of my colleagues in. I applied for the program. I couldn't do it individually. I had to have a team. So I, I um, talk, talked Sam and James, my colleagues in, who I'll talk about in a little bit. And we just absolutely had a blast. Like, the on program on Prime was fantastic, so it it is a recognition by the government that Australians are absolutely fantastic researchers, but we're not as great at commercialising that research. So they've they've developed this program um, through the CSIRO to you know remedy that to fix that, um, and and what it involves it's a two month course. You every uh, fortnight you get together with the other teams in the, in your cohort, uh, and you look to develop a product market fit. So you're doing market research to work out if there is actually a commercial application for your research, and if there is a commercial application, what that market looks like, what the size of it is, um, and how you go about ac accessing that. And what that actually means is. You have to go out, identify a market, and then go and talk to customers within that market. And the goal is to talk to 100 customers within your, within your market. And we talked to, uh, so we quickly identified that a yacht, the yachting industry, the yachting market would be a good fit for our product. And so we talked to 80 yacht owners and marina owners, and that's how we found out that yacht owners love to talk about their yachts, because they <laughs> certainly do. Um, you know, so we were predicting that the average um, interview time would be, you know, five minutes. But if you could get out of there within 45 minutes, you're doing pretty well. But they would just talk. So, and that's great because they were really enthusiastic and it showed you, um, you know, if you had a solution for their problem, they would, be, they would be completely on board with it, which is great. So towards the end of, um, end, end of On Prime, uh, we found out about On Accelerate. They were telling us about On Accelerate and that the applications closed soon after On Prime finished. And so we applied. So On Accelerate is the next step of the On Pro program, which is, so On Prime, you've, you've identified your target markets. On Accelerate is giving you the skills to then go on and access that market. So it, it involves, you know, every fortnight you go to, a, like you go to a different capital city and or a different city, and then they have different um, programs that they run. So one week they might be talking about um, intellectual property. The next week they'll be talking about commercialization and, and developing a business model. And then they'll also, the next week it might be, you know, talking about team dynamics. So there's a lot, it's a, it's a really um, intense program and it's really, uh, it's really full on, but it's absolutely fantastic. And it's actually really competitive to get in. So. In our cohort, there was 50 teams from around Australia that applied. Of those 50 teams, they then took the 20, what they considered to be the, the best, the most potential teams, and they put you through a boot camp, a two day intensive um, course. And at the end, you had to pitch your idea. And then from those 20 teams, they took 10. And we were lucky enough to be one of those 10. So that was you know, fantastic. And so our, our the main benefit of On Accelerate, you know, there, there's a lot of benefits, but the main one we feel was that the, the just the, the breadth of the contacts and the, and the network that the CSIRO guys have. Like if you needed to talk to the head of the largest venture capitalist uh, firm in Australia, 
they have the connection. They can, they can put you in touch with them. If you need to talk to uh, the largest manufacturer of carbon fibres in Australia, carbon fibre um, products in Australia, they can do that. They have just an incredible um, network and that has, you know, I couldn't imagine how we would go about getting to those people and, and talking to those people that we've needed to talk to without that program. And so the next stage, so we've just received in the last week or two that um, our application for a Jobs for New South Wales MVP grant is, was being successful, so that's great. So that, what that involves is um, basically a $25,000 match funding grant to help you build your prototype and get it out to your trial customers. So you have to have trial customers in industry um, that are willing to um, put their, like, um, put your, your product to the test, basically. So they've, they've provided a letter for us to, to, of support to, um, for the government to say, yep, we're keen to, to get these guys on board and, and let them, um, we want to give their product a trial because it could be a real, really benefit to our company. And so we've had to, um, so we've received word that that's been successful. And which so then we've got 50 grand and six months to develop, to deliver our product to our trial customers and to um, receive the feedback from them. So that's been great. And so that's going to be the next, you know, the next three or four months to the end of the year, that's going to be, you know, our main focus. Um, and, but during the, since we started the On Prime program, we've been in various um, pitch competitions and events and conferences. So last fortnight, my colleague Sam was in Melbourne um, pitching at Impact 7. My other colleague James next month is heading to Singapore for a Tech Innovation Expo. Um, with the On Accelerate program, I received an award for, from the CSIRO at Stanford Australia Foundation um, for, the, for the participant that displayed the most entrepreneurial capacity whatever that kind of means, <laughs> but I won it, so excellent. Um, so I got a yeah, $30,000 uh, scholarship to head over to uh, Stanford uh, Graduate School of Business to do a course. And I thought, excellent, um, how, but how am I going to convince my wife that I need to go to America for but what I thought was gonna be for a couple of months, because you know, $30,000, know, I'll be heading over there for a little while. But then when I actually had a look at the course, um, it turns out that it's 16,000 US dollars for a four day course. So I had sort of rain, so I could, I could convince my wife that I needed to go there for two weeks. So that, that's, that's better, that was, a, that was a lot easier sell. That was a lot easier sell. So that's, our, yeah, that's basically our timeline to date. That's where we are at the moment. Um, and let me just introduce you to our team. So there's me, of course. So I'm the managing director, and I, as I was saying before, my background is in civil engineering. I did civil engineering at the university. I was at the University of Newcastle. I was a project engineer and project manager with a local civil construction company, but I got sick of building coal infrastructure and went back to uni, convinced my supervisor that, I, that he needed to give me a scholarship to do a PhD in mechanical engineering, which was a bit of a sell, but I got there. Um, and yeah, so I've just submitted a PhD and hopefully my supervisor hasn't regretted the decision to give me a scholarship. I don't think he has, but who knows. Then we have James Bradley. So James, I met James um, through the university. He's also undertaking a PhD in mechanical engineering. But he's also the, C uh, the senior mechanical engineer at the university, which means he's, so he's the head of the workshop which means that he, any academic who has research, research to do, they go to see him to develop the apparatus or the product or, or whatever they need for them to be able to do that research. So he is a, like, he's a bit of a guru on, he's just got such a broad range of knowledge that it's, uh, it's amazing, it astounds me sometimes. So he's been an incredibly valuable asset to have on the team. Um, his, yeah, his knowledge is, is fantastic. And he's, he's been like the dry, he's essentially our manufacturing ma uh, manager. So he's been really busy for the past couple of, well, past couple of months. Um, we've been, we're about to send a prototype to Germany for some uh, wind tunnel testing in the U-Butte wind tunnel that they've got over there. Uh, and we have to send that by tomorrow 
So things are pretty hectic at the moment, but um, yeah, he's got it all under control, and we uh, so I can I can be here quite reasonably. So that's James, and then we have Sam. Sam Evans. He's the uh, he's an academic, part-time academic at the university, and he was involved. He's like a, uh, a major part of the wind energy research group at the university, and I've been he's been heavily involved in my PhD. As has James. He's he's been helping me with my um, building our, our little prototype for, for testing in the wind tunnel. He's been like a critical component. And Sam has been um, very important to help me um, with my simulation methods and with my an analysis of the results. Uh, and that's been Sam's, uh, that's Sam's strong suit. He's got the, he's got like the, uh, the CAD modeling and the um, simulation methods. That's his, that's his bailiwick. Um, yeah, so he's and he's finished his PhD in wind research at the end of last or about this time last year. So he's a he's a doctor now. Now, one thing you may notice is that we have a fair few similarities between us. There's three engineers, three white males, um, and all with backgrounds in engineering, and that is something that constantly, well, not constantly, but comes up a lot when we talk to venture capitalists and apply for various things is, you know, you guys have got the technical skills down pat, no dramas. It's the commercialization, the commercial skills that we're not so sure about. Um, and with view to that, we've taken on board a couple of advisors. So first of all, we have Paul Howdle, and he's been our mentor from the On Prime program. And then we also, um, he was also a mentor for On Accelerate. We got to we got to keep him for On Accelerate, and and continuing on, we talk to him like every couple of weeks. Uh, and he's just his background is in startups. He's had his own successful startups that he's um, that he's exited well, and he's currently basically he's an angel investor, and he's also he just enjoys helping startups realise their potential, basically. And he's, yeah, he's been a fantastic asset. And he is, as engineers and researchers, we tend to want to just keep engineering and researching. That's just what we do. And Paul tends to be the voice of reason, say, hey, hey, come on, stop doing so much research. Maybe look at more at commercializing so you get the product out there. And he's just been a great voice of reason to allow us to, you know, get us to focus back on the product and focus on the, on the commercialization. So another advisor that we have is Sorrel Osborne, who is also my sister. Um, and I might be a bit biased, but she is an amazing woman. She's a force of nature. And she is the chief operating officer for a digital marketing company down in Sydney. And she is also undertaking an MBA while she's working full time. And she has really been helping us along with the, the business development side of things as well, which is, you know, which is great. It's been fantastic. So that's our team. We also have a few other mentors that we've been in contact with regularly, um, basically deriving from the On Accelerate program as well. So from that CSIRO network, um, we talk to another three or, three or four people regularly to get their ideas and get their take on some of our ideas and decisions. And it's just been, yeah, that On, on Accelerate. If you guys are in that field in researching and looking how to commercialize your research, I could not recommend the On Accelerate program highly enough. It's just fantastic. So what are our challenges? And I dare say that this is fairly common to a lot of startup businesses. Uh, and these are our, what we've discussed as our three main ones, like there are other challenges of course, but these are what our three sort of identify ones. The first is time. Um, there's just not enough hours in the day, unfortunately. And I, I suspect though, that even if you had 48 hours in a day, um, the amount of work would just expand to fill up that time. So it doesn't matter how many hours in the day, it's just gonna be, you know, you're gonna be flat out anyway. Um, and that's, that has been a challenge. So Sam and myself, we work part-time as academics at the university, and James works full-time at the university and also working when he can with our company, uh, usually on weekends and in the evenings, um, which is, you know, which is great, but it's also a bit of a strain on him. Uh, and it's just trying to get the balance of working part-time and working um, with, the diffu with diffuse energy, which is 
essentially you're going to be a full time. It's it's a full time job. You know, you need to put a bit like a, a minimum of 40, 50 hours in a, a week, um, and then working that on top of your your part time job, it's a challenge. And so stemming from that, um, family. So James and I both have wives and, and children. Sam is a single man, lucky bloke. No, no, just joking. <laughs> just joking. But our, um, yeah, I love my wife and family, of course. But it is a challenge trying to get the balance right because, so the On Accelerate program, for instance, every fortnight we were going away for three or four days to Sydney, to Perth, to Melbourne, to Brisbane. And that, when your wife is working full time and you have two young kids, that is a real, that's a, that's a challenge for time-wise, like how do you balance that? And, and ongoing as well. So I'm, as I was saying before, I'm going to be going to Stanford uh, for a couple of weeks. And you know, so that's my wife at home looking after the kids, also working full time. And so just trying to get that balance right and trying to get buy-in from your spouse, which, is, which I absolutely have, she's been very supportive, but you still recognise that, that is a, it's a quite a challenge for, for them and it sort of weighs on you as well that you don't want to put too much pressure on them, but you also know that things have to be done. So that's a constant battle, but it's something that's, you know, you just have to take on board and, and get on with. Then our final major challenge is prioritizing. So as I was, these all sort of stem from time. Okay, so time is, you only have a finite amount of time. What do you prioritize? Like as we're all completely new to this, to the startup game. And you, there is constantly things calling for your attention. And there's the constant feeling that you're missing something. There's something that you've overlooked that is going to be extremely important that you shouldn't have overlooked. Um, and then it's going to rear its ugly head in the future. Um, so it's the, it's the, sort of the Donald Rumsfeld quote of known knowns, known unknowns and unknown unknowns. So we know that we have some unknowns, but then it's the unknown unknowns that you're constantly worried, like there's gonna be an iceberg ahead, it's gonna you know, sink our Titanic. Um, but I believe that our team, and I'm confident in our team and in our abilities that any, any icebergs that do come up, we can, we can meet those challenges and we can overcome them. So that's, and that's a really important, that's why team work and the team that you have around you, it's so important that you have, to, you have the confidence that any challenges that come up, you can meet. And that's why I've been really lucky that I, and our team's been really lucky that I just managed to convince Sam and James um, to, come on, to come on board and that we have got along so well um, and that we have, we can work together so well, even like um, under some fairly tight time constraints and some um, like sort of fairly intense pressure um, situations. So what are we going to be doing in the future? So by the end of this year to early next year, we want to have our first sales. So we've got our trial customers for the MVP grant as I was discussing, and we envisage having a successful trial with them. And we talked about that once, if because they have a definite need. And so once they, we've successfully tested our product, then uh, they'll go on to buy some. So that'll be our first revenue. And that's, you know, that's a major milestone in any business and particularly for an early stage startup like ourselves. We'll then look to be um, sourcing some seed funding to help Sam, James and myself work full time on the business because that's really what it's going to take. Like it's going to take a full-time effort to get this um, get this really going and, and functioning properly and we envisage so once we have the first sales and all the venture capitalists we've talked to and, and the angel investors that we've talked to have said as soon as you have revenue as soon as you have proof that people will pay money for your product uh, the whole um, financial the whole capital raising aspect becomes so much easier it's, you don't have to convince the people that, yeah, yeah, people really do want to buy our product. You don't have to convince the, the investors. You can show, you can prove that the investors to the investors that people want to buy your products. Um, 
From that seed funding, there's a couple of other grants that we want to look at. So there's the Building Partnerships Grant that we've identified for the Jobs for New South Wales. So that is aimed at helping um, startups develop their distribution network and to develop partnerships with other um, like-minded companies to help get your product out there. So that will provide up to $100,000. That's again, it's a matched funding grant. So we have to have about 150 to 200 grand to get that hundred thousand dollars but um, that's where the seed funding will hopefully will the seed funding will, will come in and our revenues will, will um, help as well then from that uh, at the end of next year we're going to we'll look to be applying for a federal government accelerating commercialization grant which is again a match funding grant but it's for a significant more significantly more money that's up to one million dollars and that will be um, that will be like a real inflection point if we can we can get that. That's that's a much more involved process of application than for the other grants that we've um, will be going for. But once if we can get that, then that will be that would be a real um, boon to our to our company. And so the uh, so the next stage in the future would be to basically um, sell the company retire and go and buy a beach somewhere. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's our goal, right? So that's our, <laughs> you've got to be working towards something. So that's, uh, that's where we, we look to be going in the future. Righto, so that um, would bring my presentation to a close. Thank you very much for coming along and listening to me bellyache about my problems. <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you, thank you for coming. Too many, yeah. <laughs> Nothing to do with FYPs or projects. <laughs> or anything, yeah. Oh yeah. Look. Um, congrats on your significant PhD. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, what are some te technical uh, problems that you might have stumbled across so far? Uh, so a big problem for us has been sourcing manufacturers. Um, we want to try to do everything within Australia for as long as possible, and. It has, been, it has been a challenge trying to identify people um, and companies who are able to do what we need to do because, for example, like our blades are quite th uh, slender, um, but they need to be really stiff without any flexibility. So sourcing the people to manufacture that has been a challenge. But we've, we're like, again, with our CSIRO network, they're starting to, we're starting to make the connections that we've needed to and starting to talk to people who can actually provide our, our needs. So yeah, manufacturing for all the different components has been a bit of a challenge, technically. Mm. Anybody else? How did you find ADZO owners? What was the actual process for company? We went down to the marina <laughs> and <laughs> talked to yacht owners, and that was yeah. so surprisingly, like they were. Um, and I went down one uh, Sunday afternoon after their race day and went to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> and basically call it when just it, like it's, it's a pretty confronting process it's not like it's not something i it's am comfortable with just going up to random people at a pub and saying oh g'day do you mind talking about your yacht for five minutes but we, it's usually turned into as i was saying like 45 minutes um but basically that's yeah and then you you'd, at the end of the interview you'd say look Thanks, for, thanks so much for, for talking to me. Is there anyone else that you'd recommend? And that'd be like, that after, after a few beers in, they'd be like, yeah, you need to go and talk to that bloke over there. And be like, so, oh, this guy just told me I needed to talk to you. And then, and then they would, and then they'd point you to another three or four people. And yeah, so it was, yeah, it's not something that's a comp as researchers, like we'd prefer to stay in the lab and, yeah, and, and go and do your thing in there, not having to deal with people. But as a company, you obviously you have to deal with people. So you have to sort of overcome that and just get out there. Like it's, it's not fun, but it's something you've got to do. And then in the end, you could, like in that sort of situation with the, that the, have a beer with them. And yeah, that was, that was all right. That was, that was quite enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> who was it that, who, who was it that told you all about the different grant applications you can go through? Was it through the on front? Was it through the new or was it just your own research? Um, a combination. So on Accelerate, so on Prime didn't really deal with that. On Accelerate, one of the level ups, as they call them, where, where you went away. So um, they had a expert come in and sort of assess each of the teams and look at what um, potential grants are available to them. Um, and then we've also been in contact with 
um, some specialists in, in that field who actually do all the grant applications for you. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit of a, and then we've just done some research ourselves as well. And they're the, they're the main ones we've identified, but there's also others such as the R&D tax incentive, there's a whole range of things that are available. There's a lot of things, so trying to navigate what you're eligible for is, has been, yeah, it's a challenge as well. <laughs> Now that is a good question. So that was a bit of a challenge um, which we've overcome to a certain extent now. So the, the product is, de is derived from my PhD research. So normally your PhD research belongs to you. Um, there was a bit of a grey area because I received some funding from the university as part of my scholarship. And, but. Uh, a couple of months ago, we had the uni assigned me the IP after, after a little bit of negotiation. Um, so that's been okay, but then Sam and myself working part-time, so then so half the time, that's the uni's time, half the time, that's Diffuse Energy's time. And so we only do, the, do our work on Diffuse Energy's time. With James, yeah, he doesn't, he just provides guidance on how to get things built. He doesn't do any of the IP development. Uh, so it has been a bit tricky, but it's, it's manageable. Yeah. Thanks, guys.